Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Um, I finally watched all the Beverly Hills Cops movies, all four. Uh, if you were in my last live stream, you'll know I hadn't watched any of them. I knew about the character. I've known about the theme, obviously. I knew it was a hot character for Eddie Murphy, all that kind of stuff. Big 80s movies, at least the first two. Uh, but I never watched them. So growing up, I knew nothing about the movies. I just knew that he was a cop from Detroit and I was from Detroit. Uh, and so like that, I had that connection, but I never watched them. I was more a fantasy sci-fi guy, you know, growing up. Obviously I was very young when those first two movies came out. The first movie, I wasn't even born yet. So <laughs> there's that. But I finally watched all four and I want to rank them and talk about each one in small details. Just a little bit of what I think about each of them, especially with the new one coming out just last week. I think it's, you know, prime time to actually kind of review that one as well. I was trying to think if I wanted to rank them first or if I wanted to review them first. So I guess I'll review them first. The first one is obviously the foundation of all of them. This was to me like the home alone for adults because a lot of the things that he does in the first movie, you see it come back to fruition in the second, third, and fourth movie in different ways. So a lot of his antics, like, you know, trying to talk his way into different situations, which he's always successful with, even though at the end he ends up like running away from guys so he doesn't get murdered. That happens in every single movie in different ways, but it's all kind of the same shtick that he has in these movies. But when it comes to this one, I was actually really interested, like what brings him to Beverly Hills from Detroit? What reason would he have to go there other than maybe a vacation and something happens there? But I like how in the first movie, he's actually going there because he had a friend that was out there working for some guy. They come and kill this guy in Detroit, and so he goes there. Obviously, he doesn't go there with the approval of his uh, inspector or captain in Detroit, the, the Detroit PD, um, but uh, but he goes. And you know, he's this really good detective because they keep saying that, but he's also like this wild, this wild card. You know what he's gonna do, when he's gonna do it. He seems reckless, all that kind of stuff. For a while though, I felt like they were talking him up as this great detective, and I was like, I'm not seeing it yet. But then you do get moments throughout these films, like really all four, but especially in the first one, where you do see moments where He's reading different situations. He knows what's about to happen. He's anticipating things. And then he makes a plan on the spot and then everything works out. So like, I thought that was cool too. Like it really built him up to be this guy that you do eventually trust uh, in, in tough situations, but he's still reckless. So you just don't know what's gonna actually happen with him sometimes. Side characters, Judge Reinhold uh, is in there as a uh, Billy. John Ashton plays Sergeant Taggart. They're cool, like they, they they add to that buddy comedy piece a little bit. They're not as funny, obviously, and Judge Reinhold is a terrible actor. Uh, so so you gotta kinda get over that a little bit. But Eddie Murphy really does, one, he lays the groundwork for what this franchise is and continues to be, obviously, with the fourth movie out now. Uh, but he also is the one holding the reins, really holding this thing together. You guys don't know nothing about nothing, do you? You just got your badges and your guns and you're on the job, right? Make sure we get the right drinks because my drink club sold out, throw up. But it's it, there's funny moments in this one. And this is the funniest movie of the four. I will say that. This one for me was the funniest of the four. There was a point in the beginning of the first movie where Eddie Murphy's trying to sell cigarettes to the guys uh, undercover that I thought, I'm very surprised Netflix or some other studio didn't try to get Kevin Hart to be Axel Foley or a version of Axel Foley in a, in a reboot of this franchise because it felt very similar. That Kevin Hart kind of does some things that Eddie Murphy has done, but he's trying to change kind of his persona and how he's going about Hollywood, which I, I respect that. But I, I did feel that at one point. I was like, oh, shoot, Kevin Hart's just another Eddie Murphy uh, <laughs> in some scenarios. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried. So, yeah, that's the first movie. Very grounded in the action, too. Like, there actually is a lot of action in the first one. Really, all these movies have a lot of action, but they're very grounded. They never get crazy. Um, I respected that for the second movie. The second movie, though, is probably one of the worst. Three is bad as well. But the second movie, I didn't really care for the bad guy's motivation. Like all the bad guys in these movies are the same. It's just a white guy, maybe a foreigner, but still a white guy that's rich. And he's trying to either embezzle money or he killed someone or he's working for someone above him. That's again, is also a, a, a bad white guy. So it's kind of the same deal from that aspect. I thought they changed that come the fourth movie and they didn't. But all the reasonings for... Axel Foley to go to California, to go go to Beverly Hills in particular. Like they're very loose uh, <laughs> uh, in that way. But I will say this, I like how they established that a bond was created between the side characters and Axel Foley. So the side characters in Beverly Hills and then Axel Foley in Detroit. Because between the events of the first movie and second movie, you see that they've gone on fishing trips, they've done a lot of different things. So they've created this bond where 
when what happens to Ronnie Cox's character in the second movie, he was a lieutenant of uh, Judge Reinhold and John Ashton's character, uh, Taggart and uh, Rosewood. So when he gets shot up, you understand why Axel needs to go back. Even though I didn't feel like he needed to go back, but I guess they just had that strong of a bond. So they, they do establish that, which I thought made sense. Again, though, the second movie, the villains I thought were the weakest, and the story overall was weakest. I lost track of kind of what was happening, and certain people were dying that I guess were important. I didn't care because uh, the movie was just kind of just kind of happening. Uh, and then also the ending fight scene in that one, the ending battle, was very lackluster. Uh, so I, I didn't really care for that either. So that's my least favorite of the bunch. Again, I haven't done the ranking yet. But that gives you an idea. As far as a third movie, uh, it's the silliest of the bunch. <laughs> ah! It's the silliest. The silliest. Again, you get a lot more moments of Axel Foley doing his detective work. That I like. There was actually more of that in this movie than I think all of them combined to, to, to a degree. So I appreciated that. You get a lot of the same shtick. There was almost a point also where I felt like I was watching Demolition Man because he goes up to this little... A little kiosk, little monitor that he drives up to, and he's trying to get in the building, and is talking to him, and is telling him which buttons to push. I felt like that was kind of like a demolition man moment, which was kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, th this one it, it's it's a little bit still all over the place though, as far as the tone. Uh, action wise, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, again, the ending fight is still pretty lame, probably almost as lame as the second one, maybe more so. The second one had some more explosions, which was cool, and the the action felt a little bit more spectacular. This one, well, there were some moments that happened in the amusement park, which kind of added a different kind of flair to it. It was still just boring. Uh, <laughs> and the fight scenes between Axel Foley and the main bad guy and maybe the, the the main bad guy's henchmen, like main henchmen, feel lackluster like in every movie of this one, like that, which I thought was kind of weird. I thought there'd be a little bit more to that where they try to build them up a little bit more. So yeah, that aspect I didn't really care for, but it is a more exciting movie. They try to go a little bit bigger, but still keep it very realistic, which again, all four movies do that in a really good way. So I, I appreciate that. I think it's great. Fourth movie in the newest that just recently came out. Again, feels like it's still within this franchise. It doesn't feel like it's trying to uh, change up anything. You know, this is very embarrassing. You know, part of me rather get locked up than get put in this little Fisher Price looking squad car. Y'all are the Lego cops. Jane. Hey, this is your father. It doesn't feel like it's trying to add a different aspect to the franchise. It doesn't try to change up Axel Foley in any way. The worst thing about this movie is Axel Foley's daughter. That actress is horrible. She, <laughs> if <laughs> there was many moments while I'm watching the movie, I told my wife, I said, oh my God, it just feels like she's reading off the script. It feels like she's reading the instructions on the script. Say your lines. And then the, the character walks away. Like she says her line. And I feel like even when she was walking away, she was reading that. Like everything just felt so scripted with her. Nothing felt natural or realistic about her character. And it was so frustrating. But I do like the father-daughter aspect of the story there. They didn't really overdo it. It started to get there. My wife even said it. She was like, okay, all right, we're done. Let's move on. Because they kept having this little bickering between them in every scene they were in almost. Uh, but it does die off after a while, and you're, and you're fine with it. I do wish Teresa Randall was in this one. I thought she was maybe going to show up, because I assume that was uh, Axel Foley and her character from the third movie's daughter in this movie. Like that, That's kind of what I was, I was assuming there. I don't remember seeing any pictures or anything in the movie, but I, I thought she would show up. Uh, I thought Ronnie Cox would show up, because I don't think he's dead. Yeah, he's not dead. So I, there were certain characters I was hoping would show up, just to kind of like really put it all together. But no, it didn't really happen. But again, the action's great. Story, again, is very weak. The story in all these is really what's weak. It's really just about Eddie Murphy and getting in these character moments with, with different situations. So I like that. They do continue it. There were a couple of shots where it was almost a Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones scenario of seeing uh, Eddie Murphy run down some stairs, which was hilarious. But uh, <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. He needs to get in, uh, in like a, a truck or a car or something. In, in many moments, he is. He's really just in vehicles. He's never really running after anybody. He's just in a vehicle doing his thing. If he's out and about, you know, trying to like find somebody, he's walking around with his gun. He's not running or jumping or anything like that, which makes sense. The guy's what, 63? So, I mean, you know, it, it makes sense. You got you to kind of chill out after a while. If they do a fifth one, which I hear they are working on doing a fifth movie, I'm here for it. It was fun. Watching all these movies, uh, I didn't do it straight. I did it between two days. So two on one day, two on another day. It was actually still a good time watching the franchise and kind of seeing the story and seeing how things evolved a little bit. Even though it doesn't really evolve, it just kind of continues because, again, 
Axel Foley's doing the same like little shtick that he does in different hotels, different you know bars, taking his buddies to the strip club. That happens in the first and second movie. Doesn't happen in the third or fourth movies. Like that, you know, there's different things that they didn't bring back. Even Serge, uh, that, that, that's a character. Uh, if you remember Perfect Strangers, uh, one of the funniest characters from that that show. Um, he shows up in the first, third, and fourth movie, not the second, which I thought was a little bit odd. Uh, I guess they didn't have a reason to to, to bring him up. But uh, but I did like some of the other cameos. You had Gilbert Gottfried in there, uh, and I believe the the second one you had Damon Wayans show up in the first one. You had Chris Rock show up uh, in I believe the second one. So like I like how he was kind of like spreading the wealth a little bit as far as Eddie Murphy you know, sharing uh sharing some of the spotlight a little bit with those cameos. But that brings me now to my ranking. Uh, I. <laughs> I mean, the, the review, the reviews on each of these kind of gives you an idea, but uh, ranking first movie is the best one. Again, it lays the groundwork and foundation for everything. Uh, it's the funniest, I think, of of all four, to be honest. And that's one, honestly, that I could see myself watching again. Even though, again, the villain's still weak, I feel like that's kind of the same thing through all these movies. But that one had the most going for it that I really enjoyed. Also, his reason for going made the most sense, and there was a little bit more time spent on that reason than other movies. Uh, outside of maybe, I would say, three. Next will be Beverly Hills Cop 4. I'm not calling it Axel F because that makes absolutely no sense. It's Beverly Hills Cop 4. I don't know why they didn't just go with that. Axel F, I don't get it. Um, I actually liked how they went about the continuation of showing just the city of Detroit, but also the city of Beverly Hills. It continues what they did in the other movies, but it was done a little bit differently, and you connected to it a little bit more. At least I did for the Detroit ones because that's where I'm from. So. I feel like they did a good job of showing different landmarks, showing different aspects of the city, showing the realism of the city that some other movies really don't do. I think maybe Four Brothers did the best, that Mark Wahlberg, Tyrese movie, uh, Andre 3000. Um, that one probably did the the best in comparison, but I liked how they did it in this one. Also, while it brings certain things back from the other movies as far as like Axel Foley's shtick, it does it a little bit differently because he's a little bit older. So kind of like a Bad Boys 3 type deal when they go to the club and they're like, oh, you know, we're older. Why are we here? Uh, it's the same thing for him in different scenarios. So it, while it feels familiar, it was still fun to see him in those moments. Beverly Hills Cop 3 would be three on the list. Uh, while it's, it's not the best, it's still fun to put Axel Foley in a different type of environment. Uh, being in the the amusement park, almost like a Disney World or alternate dimension Disney World type scenario. That was kind of cool. And also the detective work that he does in this one. I feel like he does a lot more detective work and, and just trying to figure out what's happening in this one than all the others. Well, again, it's happening in all the others. It's just more of it in this one. And that was more fun to see Axel Foley actually doing more police work and figuring things out and piecing the puzzle together. I thought that was pretty cool. Also, the action in that one's cool. I do remember the one scene when he's jumping on the, uh, the amusement ride to save the kids. I remember that one. I never saw the movie, but I remember that scene for some reason. I know I maybe I saw a clip or something, but I do remember that. And that's uh, really, it is a fun scene. So well, there's aspects to it that are silly, but it's a fun scene. Last on the list is gonna be Beverly Hills Cop 2. That one was not the most boring. I don't, I don't think any of these movies necessarily are boring because you got Eddie Murphy being Axel Foley. Like that in itself makes it a fun ride. But the story is very convoluted. Even though it's still simple and basic, they were doing a little bit too much for their own good. Then there were certain characters in this one that I didn't feel necessarily needed to be. Uh, so that was a little bit weird too. All in all, I had a fun ride. Me and my wife watched all of them. Uh, my kids watched a couple of them. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it, overall it was a very fun ride. I enjoyed it. I'm actually glad that I watched them all. The fourth one, again, still very good. Still good to, to kind of continue on from where they left off in the third one. Uh, even though I wish there was a couple of characters that showed up that were not here. Um, it would have been nice to kind of close all that out. But also, they're going to probably do a fifth one. So I think it's doing pretty well on Netflix, I think. But I did hear Eddie Murphy already saying they're getting a fifth one in the works. So I think that'd be pretty cool. As long as they continue to keep it grounded with the characters, keep it grounded with the action, don't go overboard with each installment like Fast and Furious. Just keep it, keep it where it's at. I like the realistic nature of the action and how they go about it. So that part's pretty cool too. But um, maybe put them in some different different scenarios. Maybe let's see a different city. I don't know. You can still call it Beverly Hills Cop, but maybe have him go overseas or something. Uh, <laughs> so that, you know, he starts in Detroit, goes to Beverly Hills, and then for some reason they I go to Europe or something. I don't know. Change it up. That'd be the only thing I would suggest. So those are my thoughts. That's my ranking. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below what you rank these movies if you watched them all. Who's your favorite character from the bunch? Obviously, Axel Foley's my favorite. 
He's a Lions fan like me. I need that jacket. So I'm gonna try to find that because that jacket was dope. Fun movies, really enjoy them. I think if you enjoy the first three or any of the first three, you're gonna enjoy the fourth one. It is still a fun movie. Not as funny as the first one, but there's still a lot to enjoy here. Again, looking forward to your comments below. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel in a big way. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.